What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media bringing you yet another Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle today. Today's opponent is going to be Hannah. And I don't think that's his actual name because this person is a guy. So I think he was just using somebody else's DS or doing that weird thing where guys just always name themselves, you know, as like females. Well, not name themselves, but they just have female characters in the game. I don't understand why people do that, but it's a thing apparently because a lot of people do it. So whatever the case may be, that is our opponent today. I did get this challenge off of Twitter, so I will be putting all of his information in the uh, description below for you guys. Uh, now today we have kind of like a an OU-ish mixed tier match. I don't remember exactly what we agreed on. I'm just looking at his team, and his team is mostly OU. Uh, not completely, but a lot. he has a lot of OU Pokemon there, so that's just what I'm basing it off of. And on my side, I have Scizor, so we had to have agreed on either Mixed here or OU, otherwise I never would bring a Scizor. Anyway, that being said, before we get further into this, um, this video here, just want to remind you guys that as long as we reach that magical number of 50 likes uh, on this video, we're going to continue those double daily Wi-Fi battle uploads for you guys. And uh, all of that fun stuff, we've been doing great with the like goals so far. Especially the last couple days in particular, so I just want to thank you guys for that. Again, amazing support. As always, you guys are just absolutely incredible, and I cannot express how thankful I am uh, for all the support you guys give me. So, that's why I sound like a broken record in every video saying the exact same things. Um, now, today's a little bit different. Today and tomorrow, it's just going to be Wi-Fi battles. It's going to be two daily, obviously. Um, but I'm going to be taking a break just for two days from the battle spot just because I don't uh, really have the time to record that stuff at this point. So I'm going to take the next two days to uh, just kind of build my inventory of videos back up again. And um, so today is, I'm trying to like think ahead here, today is Monday. So tomorrow will be Tuesday and then so Wednesday and Thursday will just be all battle spot videos. And uh, we'll get back to the one and one of each, you know, video um, after that. So it's very confusing because today's actually Sunday for me when I'm recording this. and I'm trying to think ahead and it's not really working out. Now, that's enough of me blabbering about that stuff. Let's get into the teams here. He's bringing the Mega Gardevoir. He's bringing Drapion. He's bringing Halucha, Greninja, Rotom Wash, and Dragal. Or Dragalgy, however you're supposed to say it. I know I... I, I don't know, I, I'm probably saying it wrong, but whatever. On my side, I'm bringing Choice Scarf Heliolisk. I don't think I've tried that up until this point. Um, I don't exactly remember. I may have done it on Battle Spot. Not positive, though, but I wanted to bring something kind of sort of different, so I was like, let's try that. And uh, we're going to be bringing the Defog Crobat and uh, Executor, which is a subseeding set. Also, Starmie. Umbreon, and Choice Banded Scizor. So some of this stuff is kind of standard, but it's stuff that's unusual for me. Stuff that I don't really know how to use because I've never used it before. And uh, Choice Banded Scizor is one of those things. I've only used it maybe two or three times ever. So we're going to see if we can get it to work out here. Now, he's going to be leading off with his Drapion, and I'm leading off with Heliolisk, simply because I noticed that he has no Pokemon that are going to be immune to Volt Switch, or just Electric-type moves in general. He doesn't have a Ground-type. And he doesn't have anything with Volt Absorb either, so I'm pretty safe starting off here and just going for the Volt Switch and getting some Switch Initiative. So that does a lot of damage to this Drapion. He's going to lead off with a Toxic Spikes. So that's kind of interesting. And uh, that's kind of okay for me because I am running Heal Bell on this Umbreon. I don't have Toxic. My only attacking move or move that can do any damage is going to be Foul Play. So... Um, you know, the, the whole poison thing doesn't affect me too much as long as I can get Umbreon in here to go for the heal bow when something is poisoned. I also have a Starmie that has the rapid spin uh, and a natural cure as well, so that's a good combination. He's going to go for the knockoff here after setting up that uh, second layer of toxic spikes. He's going to knock off my leftovers. That is a bit unfortunate because that passive recovery actually does help Umbreon a lot. And as you can see here, my foul play is doing a little bit of damage. It's doing slightly more than the Black Sludge Recovery. Not really enough, though. Uh, but I can take these Cross Poisons very nicely as long as he doesn't have a Swords Dance up. And he doesn't at this point. So I'm not really worried. I can just keep whittling him down, whittling him down. And then if I need to switch out, I can do that. And just finish him off with pretty much anything. And uh, that's going to be a good time. I do have the Wish. So again, as long as he doesn't Poison, I'm not really too worried about it. And actually, Poison really isn't that big of a deal either because, like I said, I have the Heal Bell. So really, the worst case scenario for me would just be a critical hit, if anything. 
Uh, so I got the Wish off. Now I'm going to go for the Protect. You know, the typical Umbreon strategy, they don't all do this, and I much prefer to not get my own Wishes. I like to try to pass them off because Wish support from Umbreon is just absolutely fantastic. It does no, it doesn't do damage, but it, it uh, helps with recovery so, so much, especially for Pokemon that can get worn down very easily with no form of reliable recovery on their own. Uh, so I'm going to go for Wish again here, and he goes for the Swords Dance. So he's going to have that attack boost. That is a bad time for me. Now he's going to be doing a lot of damage. And that is just, like I said, not, not too much fun. He's going to go for that Cross Poison, does a lot of damage. And I'm going for the Foul Play again, and that does... Way more damage this time. I know it's a resisted hit, but he's got the plus two attack now, so... I mean, I'm going to be dealing quite a bit of damage. He can't live another one. So he's just going to go for the cross poison. I guess he figures that there's no reason in him, you know, switching out at this point. So I'm going to take that cross poison. I thought about trying to pass a wish off and having myself at almost full health, but I figured, you know what, it's just a, it's a better option to get rid of this thing right now. So that's exactly what I do. And uh, out comes the Tsunami, which is his Rotom Wash. He's going to burn me with the Will-O-Wisp, which is fine. He could have predicted me to switch out there, uh, but I did not. Um, I just decided to go for the Wish to try to get my HP back up. And now I'm going to have to go for the Heal Bell because I am burned. But in the process of doing that, he also burned himself via the uh, Synchronize. So that is actually a great time for me. Get some residual damage on this thing. And I believe this is actually a Leftovers Rotom. So that works out very, very well. And that also means that he's not going to be Resto Chesto. So you need to keep that in mind. He's going to switch out into his Cherry Bomb, which is his Halucha. And I'm very much so scared of this thing. I do get the Heal Bell off, which is great. Um, because I get rid of my burn and I get my wish at the same time. So this Umbreon is very, very healthy, which is fabulous. But I don't really know what to do here. I don't know what he's going to go for. I decide to predict the High Jump Kick. Or just a fighting move in general. He goes for the Flying Press. I was not really expecting that. And Crobat takes that very, very nicely. And like I've mentioned before, I believe the last time I used this Crobat, this is kind of a weird set. It doesn't have max speed. Um, it actually has some HP investment. So it actually takes that Flying Press very, very nicely. He's going to switch out here because he, I guess, is assuming that I am max speed. Because most Crobats are. And figuring he's not going to be able to outspeed me. And uh, he, so he goes into his Rotom Wash to take the incoming Brave Bird, and he takes that kind of, sort of, nicely. Doesn't do a crazy amount of damage or anything like that. And uh, he's going to take the burn damage, he's going to get some leftovers recovery, nothing crazy. I'm going to go straight for a U-turn here. I do not want to take a Volt Switch or a Thunderbolt or even a Hydro Pump, um, because I really don't need to. I'm going to predict... Um, really just any special attack here. I figured he wouldn't go for the Will-O-Wisp, because I would think that he would predict the switch, and he does predict, I guess, the switch, or he just goes for the Thunderbolt, predicting me to stay in. Not sure entirely what he predicted there, but, uh, yeah, the Thunderbolt doesn't really do that much damage to Umbreon whatsoever. I do, unfortunately, get badly poisoned due to those Toxic Spikes. I haven't been able to switch in my Starmie, uh, to get a Rapid Spin off, uh, just between... You know, the Drapion and the Rotom, there's really no chance for me to switch in Starmie safely. I'm going to make an attempt here and predict the Hydro Pump, which is incredibly, incredibly risky. And that's actually what he goes for. I was predicting either he was going to go for a Hydro Pump or he was going to switch out there. Because I could very easily wish Protect stall his burn out at this point with Umbreon. And he couldn't really do too much about it. I figured he might possibly switch, and he thankfully goes for the Hydro Pump. If he went for an Electric-type move, I'd probably just be dead at this point. But this is great for me, because I'm going to be able to get a Rapid Spin off. He can kill me very easily, but we are going to get rid of those uh, Toxic Spikes, and that's really important, because I do not want my other Pokemon being badly poisoned. That's just not something that I want. Umbreon's not going to last forever to keep Heal Belling, so I need some way to get rid of that. Uh, so, he is going to finish me off with a Thunderbolt, which is unfortunate because Starmie really didn't get to do anything except that Rapid Spin. And that kind of sucks because Starmie has some great offensive power, but uh, it's just not working out this time. So, he's going to uh, just go for the Hydro Pump here as I bring my Umbreon back in. And that does some decent-ish damage. I'm going to get the Heal Bell off, so I'm going to get rid of the Poison on Umbreon. And now the Poison is gone for good, unless he somehow, you know, has something else that has Toxic or can set up Toxic Spikes again, and looking at that team, that Dragalge, or Dragalge, or whatever, 
uh, definitely has the potential to do both of those things. They can run Toxic, they can run Toxic Spikes. I've seen both of them, so that could be a problem. And he's actually going to go right into that now, and there's nothing that I can do about it with Starmie dead. If he sets up those Toxic Spikes, I can't spin them away. That is a little bit of a problem. I actually predicted that he might possibly go for a Sludge Bomb here, so just in case he wanted to do that, I was going to switch into Scizor. I resist both of his stabs. And uh, he just takes his opportunity to go for the Toxic Spikes. Like I said, that's a bit of a problem. I do go for the Bullet Punch, and I am Bandit, so that does a crap ton of damage to this thing. And even with the Black Sludge Recovery, that's going to be a 2-hit KO. He gets the Hydro Pump off, that doesn't do uh, enough for a 2-hit KO back, so he's going to have to switch out here, and he switches into his Cherry Bomb, the Halucha. And I'm not sure if you thought I might switch out... Uh, there was really no reason for me to do that at this point, and his Halucha takes a crap ton of damage. And that does like a good 80% even after uh, his lefty's recovery. And that is going to be the end of Halucha. He just decides to leave it in uh, for Death Fodder. Maybe looking at the rest of my team, he decided he didn't need it anymore. I kind of felt like he was going to need it to get rid of Umbreon, but... Uh, that is just my opinion on it. Who knows what was going on, you know, in his head during the match because that's just two completely different things. So I'm going to switch in my Umbreon here, and I'm about at half health, so I'm actually just going to completely fodder it off, pretty much. He goes for the Water Pledge. That's one attack that I had not seen on a competitive Greninja, but it's pretty cool, I suppose. I mean, it has 80 base power, so it has the same power as Scald. And uh, he's just going to finish me off with two Water Pledges. I, was, I think I was going for a Wish there. I'm not even sure. It doesn't matter. I was just foddering it at that point to get a safe switch into my Heliolisk. Because, again, I'm not running the Dry Skin. If I was, I would have switched in on uh, the second Water Pledge, at least. Uh, but that's not the case. This is Solar Powered. So he's going to switch out here. And uh, that was a good play because this thing is Scarfed. And I don't know if that's standard for this. I'm really not sure. I haven't run into a lot of Heliolisk, to be honest. So I don't know if uh, the people that do run Heliolisk decide to scarf it or not, but I thought I would try it, because why not? I'm going to Volt Switch. He brings in the Dragalge, and that doesn't really take any damage whatsoever from the Volt Switch, as it's a resisted hit, and it has pretty good special defense, to be honest. And so now we're just going to hit it up with a Brave Bird from Crobat, and that is a dead Dragalge. Dragalge. I say it different every single time. I have no idea how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Okay, so with the Black Sludge Recovery, we're going to get almost up to full health, which is fantastic news for me. And in comes the Gardevoir. It's nicknamed Pearl, which is a pretty good name. And it's going to Mega Evolve, and that is bad news for me. Very bad news, because one Psychic is probably going to finish me off from a Mega Gardevoir. It's just incredibly powerful. I know I'm going to outspeed, though. So I just decided to go for the U-turn, get some decent damage on this thing. It does a nice chunk because Mega Gardevoir has pretty bad uh, physical defense, to be honest. So it doesn't take that hit too nicely. I'm going to go into my Executor, and I really don't need it for anything at this point, so I'm just going to let it die. There's no reason for me to keep it. Uh, I didn't really use it in this battle, but uh, with just Gardevoir and Greninja left, there's no reason for me to keep it. The Greninja would outspeed and kill, and the Gardevoir does the exact same thing, so we might as well just fodder and get a safe switch into uh, Scizor at this point. Because even if he switches in the uh, Greninja, it's still going to take a lot of damage from the Bullet Punch. I know it's a resisted hit, um, but it's not really a good idea to switch that in. He's just going to let the Gardevoir die here. He really doesn't have that much of a choice, because if he switches in the Greninja, it could potentially be a 2-hit KO, as I am banded. I forget how much damage this does. We're going to see in a second here, because I just go for another one. And it does a good 30-ish percent. Uh, so he's going to go for the Water Pledge. I guess he could go for Dark Pulse and, you know, try to get flinches. But that does just, I don't know, that does a good amount of damage. So there's really, I guess, no reason to not go for it. And, uh, yeah, the, the second Bullet Punch is not going to kill this thing, so he can just go for another um, move of his choosing. He decides to go for Dark Pulse this time. Like I said, does not really matter. Same base power. He gets the stab off of it, so it's really pointless which one he goes for. I'm going to go into Heliolisk now and just go for that Thunderbolt, and that's going to be the end of the match. It's not super effective because he changed himself into a Dark-type, and that may have been what he was going for there to try to live that. And, uh, yeah, so that is going to be it. 
for that game, and uh, that was not a bad match at all. So he told me after the match that he was actually trying to set up a Toxic Spikes Venishock strategy, which is actually very, very cool. And that's something that I have not tried yet this generation, um, but it, it has some potential, especially with uh, Drag Alge now being able to set up the Toxic Spikes and uh, getting the Venishock and all that stuff. So that might be a set that I want to try once I breed myself a Skrelp. So I have to keep that in mind. It uh, didn't really work out this time for him because I was able to keep pulling off the heel bells and the rapid spins and all that stuff. So Umbreon is incredibly, incredibly annoying. And it's the one that I'm running is actually a Calm Nature. It has a full special defensive investment. So that with the Executor Core, which is um, fully physically defensive, is actually very, very good. Surprisingly good. And you'll see in some of the future battles that I post that uh, this Executor can be incredibly annoying as a sub -seeder. As long as it doesn't come up against uh, many very powerful special attackers, it really can do some serious damage. And if you start letting it set up subs and all that stuff with Citrus Berry and Harvest, it is incredibly hard to take down. Uh, so... Yeah, kind of annoying, kind of an annoying core is what I was trying to say, but my brain is having many, too many, too many farts. All right, well, that's going to be it for this time, guys. Um, thank you very much for watching. As always, do not forget to uh, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It does help out. Don't forget to go check out uh, my opponent's channel, which will be in the description below. Or not his channel, his uh, Twitter link, and I'm sure if he has a channel, you can find that on his Twitter page. So uh, feel free to go check him out if he does have one. And I will see you guys for the next battle. But until then, game on.